Quantum computers have the ability to solve complex mathematical problems and algorithms that are currently infeasible for classical computers. They can efficiently factor large numbers, which is the basis for many encryption methods, and can also simulate and analyze quantum systems, providing insights into chemical reactions, material science, and other quantum phenomena. To put it simply, it is the future. Have you ever wondered how quantum computers can solve complex mathematical problems that are currently beyond the capabilities of classical computers? Well, if you are overwhelmed by this remarkable technology, then I would have to tell you to stop and watch this video first. In a super exciting episode of Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Chuck Nice team up with the amazing prof Michio Kaku, who is really smart and writes books. Not just random books, actually prof Kaku is a quantum computing expert. They talked about something really cool and interesting and I'm sure this is going to blow your minds as well. Ready for a really fun time. The show starts by talking about how computers have changed over time. They used to be simple and only do basic things, but now they can do amazing things with the help of something called quantum computing. Big companies like IBM, Google, and Microsoft are racing to make the first powerful quantum computer. This new kind of computer can do things that regular computers can't, like solving really hard problems and breaking codes. It can even change important industries like space, energy, and security. So what makes quantum computing special? Well, instead of using simple pieces called bits that can only be zero or one, quantum computers use qubits. Qubits can be in many different states all at once, which is really cool. This lets quantum computers solve really complicated problems much faster than regular computers. They can help with things like finding cures for cancer or understanding big mysteries like black holes and how the universe started. But quantum computers can do even more. They might be able to help us understand our own minds better. By studying the connections in our brains, we can learn more about how we think and feel. It's like exploring a whole new world that regular computers can't reach. It's very exciting. As we go through the show, we learn more and more about quantum physics, which is a really mind-blowing topic. We also wonder if these cosmic tunnels could hold the secrets of how the universe was created. A smart professor named Michio Kaku tells us about the possibility that the Big Bang came from a huge tunnel in space that was getting bigger. It happened when things were really hot and chaotic. It's like we're taking an exciting trip through outer space. And there's something else cool to think about how quantum computers and string theory are connected. There are tiny particles that vibrate and do strange things, and they give us even more interesting things to explore. We don't know what secrets they have or how they could change the way quantum computers work. Professor Michio Kaku also talks about something really amazing, nuclear computing. Instead of using the way atoms are arranged, like we do in regular computers, we could use the center part of atoms called nuclei. It's a mind-blowing idea, but it's also important to be careful. Nuclear weapons and big accidents could happen if we're not responsible. Science brings exciting possibilities, but it also brings big challenges. But let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about what could happen if we combine the incredible powers of AI and quantum computers? It's a really exciting idea. Would it bring us great things or would it cause problems? And what if the military used advanced AI and quantum computing together? AI is getting smarter every day, and scientists are working hard to make quantum computers better. What would happen if these two things joined forces? The US government even told Google and NASA to stop working on quantum computers, and that made people worried. There must be something dangerous going on. Even Professor Michio Kaku is worried about what could happen when AI and quantum computers work together. It's like an amazing team-up between software and hardware that could change the world. Come with me on a journey to learn more about quantum computers and what Professor Michio Kaku said. They are really amazing. They use special rules from quantum mechanics to do mind-blowing calculations. Regular computers use bits that can be 0 or 1, but quantum computers use qubits that can be both 0 and 1 at the same time. It's really confusing. Qubits can be in different states at once because of something called superposition. That's why quantum computers can do lots of calculations at the same time and be much faster than regular computers. But that's not all. To work with qubits, quantum computers use something called entanglement, which is also really interesting. Imagine a world where special parts of computers, called qubits, are connected together. These qubits can do amazing things. Even if they are far apart, they can affect each other. This connection allows quantum computers to do very complicated calculations. But wait, don't mix up quantum computers with regular ones. Regular computers use bits to represent information. A bit can only be a zero or a one. 
It's like having only two choices. Quantum computers are different. They use qubits, which have special abilities like being in multiple states at once and being connected to each other. With these qubits, quantum computers can solve really hard problems that regular computers can't handle. Now let's go back in time to a long time ago. In the early 1900s, some smart scientists discovered something amazing called quantum theory. It helped them understand how really tiny particles behave. This theory changed everything we thought we knew about how the world works. One of the scientists, Max Planck, had a big idea. He said that energy comes in small amounts called quanta. This idea showed that particles, like electrons, have specific energy levels. It was an important step toward understanding quantum stuff. Another scientist, Werner Heisenberg, made a surprising discovery in 1925. He found out that we can't know exactly where a particle is and how fast it's moving at the same time. This idea showed that in the quantum world, things can be uncertain and unpredictable. It was really different from what we knew before. In 1935, some other scientists, Albert Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen, asked a strange question. They wondered if particles could be connected in a weird way, no matter how far apart they are. They called it spooky action at a distance. They didn't have an answer at that time, but it got people thinking. It took a while for the idea of quantum computers to come up. In 1980, a scientist named Paul Benioff suggested using quantum stuff for computers. He wanted to make a computer that could use the special powers of quantum physics to do amazing calculations. It was a big idea that opened up a whole new world of computing. After Benioff, another smart person named Richard Feynman got really interested in quantum computers. In the 1980s, he had some cool ideas about how quantum computers could do things that regular computers couldn't. He thought about how powerful quantum stuff could change the way we use computers. Feynman's ideas got other people excited too. They started studying quantum computers more and made progress in the 1980s and 1990s. Then, in 1994, a mathematician named Peter Shore came up with an amazing way for quantum computers to solve really hard math problems way faster than regular computers. This was a big deal because it could help make our communication systems more secure. In 1998, some scientists at a lab made a real quantum computer with just two quantum parts. It wasn't very powerful, but it was a big step forward. Then in 2001, another group of scientists at IBM made a quantum computer with seven parts, showing that progress was being made. In 2002, researchers started working on a way to fix mistakes that happen in quantum computers. They wanted to make sure the information stays accurate. They made something called the surface code to help with this. In 2005, some researchers made a quantum computer with five parts that actually worked. It was exciting because it showed that we could build practical quantum computers even with a small number of parts. In 2007, scientists found a way to make the parts of a quantum computer more stable. This was important because it made it easier to build quantum computers using better materials. Then in 2010, some scientists did something really cool called quantum teleportation. It doesn't mean moving people, but it means transferring information from one place to another using quantum stuff. They were able to do it over a long distance, which could be helpful for building networks that use quantum computers. So lots of smart people have been working on quantum computers, and they've made some really exciting progress along the way. In the year 2013, Google and NASA worked together to create something amazing called the D-Wave 2. It's a super special computer that uses quantum technology. Big organizations were really interested in this kind of computer, so they put a lot of time and money into it. But then, something unexpected happened. The government told Google and NASA to stop working on the quantum computer. This made the project stop in its tracks and caused a lot of problems. The computer was ready to go, but it couldn't be used because of this interruption. It was like having a powerful machine that couldn't do anything useful. Google was really frustrated by this situation. They had even made a special lab just for the quantum computer. But now that lab was closed, and Google didn't know what to do next. They couldn't say much about their plans until NASA started working again. So for now, the amazing computer was just sitting there, waiting for its chance to shine. The government shutdown made a big impact on the project. NASA had to stop testing and exploring the new technology they were working on. They lost opportunities and time, and they felt frustrated. The people working on the project wanted to keep making progress and explore new things, but they had to wait because of the setback. This made them feel sad and less hopeful. In 2019, 
Google made a big announcement about its amazing achievement with quantum computers. They used a special quantum processor called Sycamore to solve a really hard math problem very quickly. It would have taken regular computers thousands of years to do the same thing. This breakthrough showed how powerful quantum computers can be compared to regular computers for certain tasks. It also inspired other big technology companies like IBM and Microsoft to work hard on their own quantum computers. A long time ago, scientists and engineers wanted to create something extraordinary. Computers that worked in a completely different way, using a special type of technology called quantum. They believed that these quantum computers could do amazing things and help us solve problems that traditional computers couldn't. Then, in the year 2020, a company called IBM introduced a groundbreaking invention called the IBM Q System 1. It was a very special kind of computer because it used the power of quantum mechanics to perform calculations. This was a big deal because it was the very first quantum computer designed specifically for businesses to use. It was like a super smart machine that could solve complex problems faster than any regular computer. This achievement was a major milestone because it made quantum computers more practical and accessible to a wide range of people. It meant that businesses could now use these powerful machines to make new discoveries, find better solutions to problems, and improve the way things worked in many different fields. As news of this incredible invention spread, people all around the world became fascinated by the potential of quantum computers. Governments and industries realized that investing in this new technology could lead to exciting advancements. They understood that quantum computers had the power to revolutionize the way we do things and make our lives better. In response, governments started providing funding and support for research projects focused on quantum computing. They wanted to encourage scientists and experts to explore this frontier and uncover its possibilities. They established special places called quantum research centers and labs, where brilliant minds from universities, companies, and government agencies could come together and work as a team. These places became hubs of innovation and collaboration, where ideas were shared, experiments were conducted, and new breakthroughs were made. By investing in quantum computing, Governments and industries hope to unlock its immense potential and pave the way for a future where quantum computers would become an integral part of our lives. They believe that by working together and exploring the mysteries of quantum mechanics, we could make incredible discoveries, solve complex problems, and create a better world for everyone. Scientists today are thinking about whether there might be smart creatures on other planets. They have an interesting idea. Maybe these aliens are using black holes as super powerful computers. This idea is cool because it could explain why we haven't met them yet. For a long time, scientists have been confused about something called the Fermi Paradox. They wonder why we haven't found any definite proof of life on other planets, even though there's a good chance it exists. The hart tipler idea tries to solve this mystery. It says that if there are advanced alien civilizations in our galaxy, we should see signs of what they're doing all around us. But some German and Georgian scientists have a different idea. They think these civilizations might be using black holes as supercomputers. In the past, scientists mostly looked for radio signals from faraway star systems to find signs of aliens, but maybe that's not enough. Some researchers say we should look for other signs too, like special kinds of energy, tiny particles called neutrinos, fancy communication called quantum communications, and big waves called gravitational waves. Gia Diwali and Zaza Osmanov did a study about advanced alien civilizations. They talked about something called quantum computing, which is a way to do really fast and secure computer stuff. They think that big black holes could be used by these aliens to do the computing. Scientists say that black holes are a great place for quantum computing because of some special scientific rules. The aliens would make really tiny black holes that give off super strong radiation, which is like a kind of energy. This radiation could be a sign that aliens are really advanced. It would have special particles called neutrinos. There are these really small particles called neutrinos that can go through almost anything. Scientists think they could be used to send messages because they're hard to block. They believe that these messages could come from special kinds of black holes and the collisions of particles that make them. In Antarctica, there's a special place called the Ice Cube Observatory. It's hidden deep under the ice, and it can help us find signs of smart aliens. This is important because we haven't found any proof of aliens yet, and it's called Fermi's Paradox. The idea is that these smart aliens might not be using radio or digital communication as we do. They could be using black holes as super powerful computers. That's why we haven't found any signs of their technology. We're getting better at computers too. So maybe these aliens only use radio signals for a short time. Scientists call this the L in a math equation about aliens. 
One really smart scientist named Michio Kaku thinks a lot about these strange ideas. He knows a lot about how things work in space. He wrote a book called Quantum Supremacy that talks about a new kind of computer called a quantum computer. It's super fast and could change how we do things. Dr. Kaku also talks about AI chatbots, which are computer programs that can talk like people. He says they can't always tell what's true or false, but quantum computers can check if the information is right, which is important. Dr. Kaku is worried, though. He thinks governments might use quantum computers to control what's true and what's not. This could be a big problem if people can't trust the information they get. Quantum computers have a lot of good uses, but we have to be careful so they don't get used to trick or control us. AI is a really smart technology that has helped us in many ways. It can create pictures and have conversations with us. But sometimes AI can be dangerous. One problem is called deep fakes. Deep fakes are when people use AI to make fake videos or pictures that look real. This can cause a lot of confusion because we don't know what is real and what is fake. Another problem with AI is that it can be used in wars or conflicts between countries. People can use deep fakes to make fake orders and cause chaos. This is not good because it can make people scared and confused. AI can also cause problems in our justice system. Sometimes, AI tools can make unfair decisions and put people in jail for longer or treat them badly. This can happen especially to people who are already struggling. There are also concerns about AI in the stock market and on the internet. AI trading bots can disrupt the stock market and cause problems. And AI search engines can change how we find information on the internet. But don't worry, scientists are working hard to make better technology. They want to make computers called quantum computers that can do really amazing calculations. They are using different approaches to build these computers, like gate-based quantum computing and adiabatic quantum computing. Building quantum computers is not easy. They are very sensitive and can make mistakes easily. Scientists have to make sure the computers stay in the right state to work properly. They also need special environments with very low temperatures. Even though there are challenges, scientists are determined to keep working and make progress in AI and quantum computers. But wait, there's more. Fixing mistakes is another really important part of this big journey. Scientists work really hard to figure out how to correct errors that happen when we use quantum computers. These errors can get worse over time and make the results less accurate. Making sure we fix these errors adds more difficulty to the things we need to make the computers work, which is already really hard. But don't worry, because scientists are not alone in this big adventure. They work together, share things they need, and imagine a future where we make huge progress with quantum computers. Governments, schools, and companies are spending a lot of money on researching and developing quantum technology. Programs like IBM Quantum, Google Quantum AI, and Microsoft Quantum give scientists all around the world access to really advanced computers, programs, and things to learn. But the story doesn't stop there, my friends. As technology keeps getting better, scientists are finding new and exciting ways to use quantum computers. These computers are super special because they can solve really hard problems and do it way faster than regular computers. They can help us with all kinds of things like making things work better, teaching computers to learn, keeping secrets safe, and even finding new medicines. Imagine this. There's so much information in space that scientists and engineers have to go through. It's like a huge puzzle that needs to be solved. Regular computers can only look at one piece of the puzzle at a time and it takes them a long time to finish. But quantum computers are like superheroes with special powers. They can look at lots of pieces at the same time and solve the puzzle really quickly. It's like they're zooming through space, leaving regular computers behind. The possibilities are endless. Scientists think that quantum computers can help us explore space even more and maybe even find aliens. They can help us understand the universe better and make new discoveries. It's really exciting to think about what quantum computers can do and how they can change the way we do things. So as time goes on, scientists will keep working on making quantum computers even better. They will keep finding new ways to use them and make them more powerful. And who knows, maybe one day, we'll all be using quantum computers in our everyday lives. The future is full of amazing things, and quantum computers are a big part of that. Scientists are really curious about finding life on other planets. They use special computers called quantum computers to help them analyze lots of information from telescopes and space probes. These computers are super fast and can look for patterns or things that seem strange. If they find something unusual, it might mean that there are aliens out there. Quantum computers can also help scientists find planets that could be good for living on, understand messages from aliens, and figure out if there are signs of life in the air of other planets. But quantum computers aren't just for finding aliens. They can also teach us a lot about the universe. They help us make models and simulations of things like galaxies and black holes. These simulations can help us understand how these things move and behave. 
Quantum computers are really good at doing these simulations quickly. This helps scientists plan space missions better, figure out the best paths to take, and keep track of space junk. All of this makes space missions safer and more successful. Quantum computers can change how we keep information safe during space exploration. When we send messages and data in space, we need to make sure they don't get into the wrong hands. Right now we use special codes that are really hard to break, but quantum computers are really good at solving hard problems quickly. That means they can break these codes easily. So our usual way of keeping things secret is not safe anymore. But don't worry, there is a solution called quantum cryptography. It uses something called quantum mechanics to make sure our messages stay private. Quantum mechanics is a fancy word for how really tiny things like atoms and particles behave. One important idea in quantum mechanics is called entanglement. It means that two particles can be connected in a special way, no matter how far apart they are. Another idea is called superposition. It means that a particle can be in different states at the same time. Quantum cryptography uses these ideas to create special communication channels that are safe from eavesdroppers. It's like having a secret language that only the sender and receiver understand. This way, even if someone tries to listen in, they won't be able to understand the message. It's like having an invisible shield around our secrets. Using quantum cryptography can help us protect important information during space missions. It keeps our messages safe from people who shouldn't see them. With this technology, we can make sure that only the right people can access and understand the information we send in space. It's like having a lock that only opens for the right key, so we can explore space with confidence, knowing that our secrets are safe. Quantum computers are super powerful computers that can do amazing things. They can help us explore space and make our spaceships go faster. Scientists use something called quantum mechanics to understand how tiny particles behave in special ways. They found out that particles can go through energy barriers, which means they can pass through things that normally stop them. This could help us make better spaceship engines that are faster and more efficient. We can learn about these cool quantum things by using computers to simulate and study them. But quantum computers are not just for space exploration. They can also be used for important things like the military. They are really good at breaking secret codes that protect information. This helps make sure that important messages between people in the military are safe and secure. Quantum computers can also help with other military tasks, like planning and making decisions. They can even make sensors that help find targets and make communication channels that are safe for sharing information during battles. All of these things make the military smarter and better at what they do. Even though quantum computers are super cool, they can also be a little scary. One big problem is that they can break the codes that protect our information. These codes are like locks that keep our secrets safe. But quantum computers can unlock those locks really fast using something called Shor's algorithm. That means people with bad intentions could get access to our personal and secret information. Things like our bank accounts or important government secrets could be in danger. So while quantum computers are really exciting and can do amazing things, we also need to be careful and think about how to keep our information safe. Scientists and experts are working hard to find ways to protect our secrets even in the age of quantum computers. There are some things we need to worry about when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin use special codes to keep transactions safe and make sure the digital money is real. But there's a new kind of computer called a quantum computer that might be able to crack these codes. If that happens, cryptocurrencies won't be secure anymore and people might not trust them or want to use them. This could cause a lot of problems for the digital economy and make things really chaotic. Not only that, but quantum computers could also be a problem for the internet itself. The internet uses special codes too called public key cryptography to keep our online communication and transactions safe. But if quantum computers can break these codes, then our information won't be safe anymore. Bad people might be able to get our personal information or do cyber attacks. This would be really bad for online shopping, banking, and trusting each other online. Another thing to worry about is our privacy. Quantum computers are really powerful and can figure out hidden patterns in big sets of secret information. This could be a big problem for people and companies who want to keep their secrets safe. To deal with these problems, we need to be prepared. Smart people are already working on new ways to keep things safe from quantum computers. They're making new codes that quantum computers can't crack, but we need to plan carefully and work together to make sure the new codes work and our old systems stay secure. We also need to invest in new technologies and standards that can protect us from quantum computers. Governments and companies should work together and make rules to keep everyone safe. And it's important for different countries to work together too, so we can all face these challenges together. And that's a wrap for now.